Twelve ships arrived at a Sicilian port in October 1347, and those who approached were greeted with the horrific scene. Nearly all of the passengers were either deceased or barely clinging to life, their skin covered in black boils oozing blood and pus. The Sicilian authorities, horrified by the gruesome sight, demanded that the ships depart. However, the damage had already been inflicted. The Black Death had made its way into Europe. What followed was one of the most catastrophic events in history, resulting in the deaths of millions of people. Let us delve into how the bubonic plague decimated at least one-third of Europe's population, if not more. Although Europe suffered greatly from the plague, it was not the first to be impacted. Furthermore, it was not ignorant of the existence of a disease that was already causing widespread death and destruction in other regions. Prior to the arrival of the infected ships in Sicily, rumors of a dreadful sickness decimating populations in China, India, Egypt, Persia, and Syria had circulated far and wide. The cause and origin of the Black Death remained unknown, yet it appeared to spread along trade routes that stretched across the Near and Far East. Once it emerged, it proved to be unstoppable. Those who contracted the Black Death would experience swelling in their lymph nodes, and these growths would rapidly enlarge into egg-sized, blackish-blue lumps. The lumps would then become infected and discharge bodily fluids. Furthermore, those afflicted with the disease could manifest any combination of various additional symptoms. These may include fever, pain, chills, sweating, upset stomach, and diarrhea. Death would almost inevitably follow. According to eyewitnesses who had witnessed its effects firsthand, mere brief physical contact with the clothing of an infected individual was sufficient to transmit the disease to others. However, some physicians argued that the spread of the disease occurred when the departing spirits of the deceased infected others as it moved on. Clearly, during this period in history, the actual mechanisms of disease transmission were not yet thoroughly understood. With little comprehension of the disease, the majority of people were unable to protect themselves against it. Only a handful of regions such as certain isolated islands that were separated from the rest of Europe by the sea, managed to remain free of the pandemic. The remainder of the population was not as fortunate. The bacterium managed to breach the defenses of virtually every European city, causing many individuals who seemed perfectly healthy one day to succumb to the disease within a matter of days. In rare cases, a person could survive for a week or two before the perishing. To compound the issue, those who contracted the disease would typically be asymptomatic for the initial few days, meaning that no one was aware that they had been infected. As a result, effectively isolating infected individuals from the rest of society was practically unfeasible at that point. Those who attempted to safeguard themselves by escaping to the countryside were not entirely safe either, as the plague also ravaged livestock. Thousands of mostly domesticated animals also suffered a brutal demise. The scarcity of wool became such a concern that it resulted in a shortage throughout the entire continent. Although many European regions recorded a death toll of roughly 30%, an astonishing 90% of the population in the Italian city of Florence perished. On occasion, corpses were left where they lay, since there were not enough surviving individuals to bury them. Several French villages and other regions were left devoid of a single living individual, transformed into ghost towns by the mercilessness of the Black Death. In some cases, nature gradually took over and the areas that were once inhabited were eventually reclaimed by the surrounding forest. It was not until the conclusion of World War I and the advent of aerial photography that these sites 
which once upon a time were once someone's homes, were rediscovered. The majority of estimates posit that the total death toll in Europe ranged from 50 to 70 million, or approximately one third of the population. Global estimates of the death toll due to the Black Death range from 155 to 200 million individuals. At that time, the world's population was a mere 500 million people, implying that almost half of all the inhabitants, or even more according to some sources, perished. How was the Black Death able to spread so rapidly and claim so many lives, both human and animal? During the 1300s, people had limited understanding of the Black Death's causes and methods of transmission. Moreover, those in the medical profession made numerous unsuccessful attempts to treat the disease. Yersinia pestis, the bacterium responsible for the Black Death or bubonic plague, is indeed extremely contagious and can be transmitted through various means. There is a belief that during its later stages, the Black Death could mutate into an airborne strain that could be transmitted to a new host through a simple sneeze or cough. However, regardless of whether the strain was airborne or not, it is believed that all forms of the disease, including those in the earlier stages, were transmitted by a flea or lice bites. Additionally, many animals as well as livestock in the countryside served as hosts for the blood-sucking pests. Examples of animals that served as hosts for the plague include rabbits, squirrels, and mice. Nevertheless, numerous experts in the scientific community contend that the urban rat and its fleas were the most significant contributors to the spread of the Black Death. This assertion is partly based on the observation that rats display symptoms that are quite similar to those observed in humans. Moreover, in cases of modern-day plague, many individuals who have contracted the disease also have accompanying flea bites. Recent outbreaks often follow what's known as rat falls as well, when rodents die off in record amounts for unspecified reasons. The most widely accepted theory is that the Black Death originated when rats carrying the plague died and their fleas sought more blood from another available source, such as humans. When an individual was bitten by an infected flea, they would be exposed to the deadly bacterium. Supporting this theory, it was commonplace for ships during the mid-1300s to be infested with rats, which thrived in the dark and humid environment. After the infected ships arrived in Sicily, the plague spread to other port locations throughout Europe and as far south as North Africa, following a trade route pattern similar to the one observed in Asia. Nevertheless, some recent revisions have been proposed to the rat-based theory. As previously mentioned, the Black Death is not the only outbreak of the plague in world history. There have been prior and subsequent outbreaks that followed an entirely different pattern. Europe's Black Death spread at a much quicker rate than previously observed outbreaks, and historical records did not mention any massive die-off of rats in the days or months leading up to the outbreak. Some scientists now propose that human fleas and lice were the true culprits responsible for the European strain of the disease. In this case, fleas would bite infected individuals and then subsequently move on to others who were within close proximity, transmitting the disease one by one. When data was fed into simulations, the human flea model more closely corresponded with data obtained from seven of the nine European cities affected by the plague. Those with this latest evidence concede that the origins of the plague remain the subject of ongoing controversy. Nonetheless, regardless of whether the fleas were human or rat fleas, it was blood-sucking pests of one form or another that transmitted the disease so quickly and effectively. It has been suggested that the Black Death 
may not have been the sole cause of the widespread destruction during its outbreak. Upon exhumation of victims' bodies from mass graves in England, anthrax spores were discovered alongside them. The co-occurrence of anthrax and the Black Death would have undoubtedly exacerbated the situation. Anthrax can be transmitted not only through contact with sweat, saliva, or tears, but also by mere skin contact. In other words, during the Black Death pandemic, individuals could have contracted a life-threatening illness in almost every possible way. It is conceivable that anthrax and other diseases rendered individuals more susceptible to the plague by compromising their immunity. Furthermore, it is possible that the death toll attributed to the Black Death included victims who perished due to anthrax or other illnesses. In addition to its rapid transmission from one host to another and the involvement of other diseases, the treatments utilized for the Black Death were ineffective and may have even contributed to the death of victims or inadvertently facilitated its spread. In the early stages, medical professionals employed practices such as bloodletting on individuals afflicted with the plague. This involved making incisions in veins or arteries located in the neck or arms of those who were ill, resulting in the free flow of blood. Bloodletting was not a novel procedure and had been practiced since ancient times in Egypt and Greece. Historical figures believed that the human body required the proper balance of blood, phlegm and bile to maintain good health. Bloodletting was thought to remedy potential imbalances in the body by removing excess blood, which was believed to be the cause of illness. Regrettably, bloodletting treatments proved as futile for victims of the plague as it did for Charles II or George Washington, who succumbed to the procedure shortly thereafter, despite experiencing a sore throat and seizure, respectively. Another technique employed as a form of treatment was boil lacing, which entailed puncturing the boils with a sharp object to drain them of their contents. If left untreated, the boils would continue to expand and eventually poison their host as a result of the accumulation of dead blood and pus. In addition to the high probability of the patient dying, the boils contained extremely infectious material, which could have contributed to further spread of the disease. Other techniques such as burning herbs or immersing the sick in vinegar or rose water were also ineffective, as one might expect. As failures mounted, many doctors eventually ceased to accept patients, while priests declined to administer last rites out of concern for their own well-being. Nature provided little respite either. In addition to their lack of knowledge on how to manage the plague, people were also genetically predisposed to succumbing to it. Analyses of the remains of the European population from that era revealed that only 0.2% possessed a gene that could provide some sort of immunity. The other 99.8% of the population lacked any form of immunity. Given that a substantial number of those who were susceptible to the plague perished, they were unable to transmit their genes to future generations. Those who did possess the gene were more likely to survive and pass it on to their offspring, leading to the present-day reality that Caucasian Americans have a 15% chance of possessing some degree of resistance to the disease. This is particularly encouraging considering that modern strains of the plague are still prevalent today. The arrival of the 12 death ships and the subsequent outbreak of the disease had a profound impact on history claiming the lives of countless men, women, and children.